Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Big Trouble in Little China. I really enjoy this movie. It's in one of my, you know, I love it categories. It's directed by John Carpenter, and he's one of my favorite. At a time when I was younger, I think it was a moment that I kind of said, wow, he could have fun. Mind you, this is a 1986 film, so I'm 15 years old, around. Just knocks it out of the park for me. I'm so into martial arts movies and all the Shaw Brothers uh, kung fu movies. It just blended so much. And it's an interesting story also that this was supposed to be uh, a western and basically the original script was set in 1880s uh, the central character would be a cowboy riding into town and then it would go into the mysticism and all the um, craziness but in revisions and script redos they decided to make it a more modern story with the mystical and the um fantasy type martial arts and in my opinion they knocked it out of the park you know we have kurt russell at his prime kim cattrall it's just uh, dennis dunn james hong the side characters the villains everything is so over the top cheesy fun and that's like my whole review. I should just stop here. This is a fun action comedy. Jack Burton, played by Kurt Russell, is a truck driver. And he's just got so many one liners. This movie has maybe the most, you know, one liners. It was the 80s. Everybody had to do it, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. But again, it's, a, it's an action story about a trucker meeting his friend and he's going to get married. and they get involved in this Chinese war uh, that happens in the streets and some festival, and it just goes bonkers. Like, okay, you got a wisecracking trucker, and his verbiage, his his whole attitude through the movie is ridiculous. Because, you know, he's just a, a loudmouth asshole, and he just elevates himself to a hero at the end of the movie. That's his journey, but it's ridiculous. It's so much fun. Kurt Russell looks like he's having a ball. But you can see all the set pieces. I mean, the three storms show up. And it's lightning, you know, uh, rain. And these are mystical, magical powers as creatures in this movie. And Jack Burton's like, what the fuck is going on? It's just so much fun for me. Again, I might put this in a category, you know. It's John Carpenter with sort of a budget and it's one of the movies that disillusioned him with hollywood going back to more independent like film i guess the same could be said for like a george romero type and it's a bomb in the box office but it's just a cult classic now it is from beginning to end a fun romp that just twists everything and blends everything fantasy martial arts mythology um, you know, you've got your villains that are just remarkable. There's just so much going on with these characters. Um, and you got this, uh, what was it? The little guy, uh, Victor Wong. I think his name is Egg Shen. <laughs> He's a sorcerer. And it's just, you see all these characters from the movies. You know them here and there. You've seen them all in the 80s and the 90s. And it's just put together in such a fun way. I never stop smiling. There's just uh, cool chemistry in the movie. And King Cattrall is, you know, beautiful, gorgeous. This is her prime also, I would say, rather than the um, Sex in the City. But this is how I knew her from this and, like, Mannequin, or, you know, some movies. And I'm just a rip-roaring teenager. I just love martial arts movies, uh, Love Kurt Russell and John Carpenter. And he makes a fun action comedy movie that is ridiculous, overboard. Uh, he gets his truck stolen. He's got to agree to help his friend find his fiance who was here from China. 
and they get involved in the gang. And then they, there's all these locations and special effects and makeup. It's just at that borderline of, God, this looks ridiculously stupid. And wow, this is fucking amazing. The love and, you know, blood, sweat, and tears you put into movie making. It's just evident here. And again, when you look at the, see, this is another behind the scenes type thing. You always go back and watch them. I do anyway, when I can. But I would do a lot more of these if I didn't feel like I had to watch them first. There's so much good stuff on TV. And it's Kurt Russell, charming, you know, just young and vibrant. Just <laughs> vibrant. Just, uh, they take a potion. There's so many good mo scenes in this movie that, for me, I uh, just uh, put it over the top with just a movie you never shut off. If it comes on, you're watching it. I do get that feeling of being in that people would look back at this or watch it and go, you're fucking crazy. You know, this is stupid. And yeah, yeah I, you know, I get that, but sometimes I don't mind. You know, I bring up sometimes that I actually enjoy the Green Lantern movie, but I make no illusion that it's not well done, it's not put together well, and the choices they make were fucked up. I just love to happen to see Green Lantern power ring and all the stuff, and I have fun with it. I wouldn't put this in that category because I think it's a better made movie, but, you know, all the behind-the-scenes stuff, you got a script, it's redone, you're bringing in this, you bring in John Carpenter, he comes in, just does his thing, and the music, again, subtle, and has John Carpenter's feel from the beginning. And when you've got great martial arts, a buddy cop type movie, and your damsels in distress, you've got mystical creatures, and it's just insane from beginning to end. And some of the fucking things they get into are just out there. I could see, uh, if you play quote unquote the woke culture, would it poo poo on this? I'd say maybe yes. The humor might be a little too mo too much. Uh, hmm. I don't know. You can imagine with the stereotypes and the cultural appropriation and stuff. I, you know, and some of the verbiage is just uh, off the cuff, wise ass shit that might not go over well. I mean, you just take the trends, like you know, in the fifties, you know, women the guys are slapping women, and it's whatever. You know, you don't see it much no more. And, you get what I'm saying? It's just we change and we evolve. Our movies change our, you know, premises of what makes up a good, uh, you know, series of events on film. You know, some of our brains turn it into a TV show. I, I could see this being revamped now for like a Showtime uh, series. Because it has such a good way of blending in, well, at the time, modern, 1986, truck driver type thing, and blending in all the Chinese mythology, um, magic and sorcery, alchemy, um, creatures, and you just, uh, I remember not expecting, well, remember, it's 1986, so there's not really much to go on, right? You're not going online, and, you know, I remember telling a story of a friend, came up to me and goes, hey, did you see Lethal Weapon yet? And I was like, what's that? He's like, oh, it's a movie, it's great, you should go see it. You go see it and you're blown away, but I wasn't uh, watching trailers for it. I don't remember the buzz about it that, you know, let you look into things. Remember, there was nothing back then. And this is like in the same category. It's like, oh my God, what is this? Big Trouble in Little China. And for me, living in New York, it's like, you know, we got Chinatown, the parts of Manhattan, Little Italy, and is that... um feel you get, you know, because I used to love going into Chinatown, the, the Kung Fu movies were there, by all your, um, you never have the good Kung Fu movies, you always had to go to Chinatown and get the stuff, and buy your Chinese stars, swords, and whatever the hell you want, it's just, it's just a, another iconic moment, and I say this a lot, but some things are magic to you, like I can't see People taking me seriously if I said, oh, we got to watch this. And 
I would definitely, you know, point out what I liked and what I thought was intriguing about it and uh, unique. And but they're gonna roll their eyes at a cheesy, corny action martial arts movie, and it just blends so much stuff. It's got so much humor to rapid fire dialogue. It's got that feel. It's caught in a time thing, and I love it. Again, this could be time it comes out. The love of John Carpenter. And I try to be honest enough to say, no, I think this is just a fun movie no matter what. And it's adds on that I just happen to love him as a director and uh, music and the things he can do in um, his movies and films. And there's also that maybe, you know, underdog type guy. You know, a guy who makes such great movies but stayed away from... The big, maybe he was kept away, right? I don't know. You know, I'm not the most knowledgeable on these things. So, I don't know, maybe a George Romero type feel with his uh, pink grandfather to zombies and John Carpenter to slasher films. Just how they originated there and their feel was cemented there and they stayed there. You know, you could also say that he wasn't good enough in the business and that's fine but when i look at his work i even love some of his underrated stuff i just have a ball and it does make me somewhat biased but as i said from the beginning of this this is just lots of fun it's an 80s action comedy you know fantasy movie and again you just gotta remember you blend in all this in you know by the middle to end of the movie he's got like a little uzi and it's iconic part of one of the posters and He's got to deal with creatures and uh, people with superpowers. This is bonkers, off-the-wall fun. Really ingenuitive makeup and special effects. Yes, you'll see some, you know, things here and there that just were like, what? A guy, guy fucking blowing up. Just gets there, rides this wave, and it's done expertly. And just having fun with this movie over and over. It's a joy. It's one of those movies you go back to. Like I said, if it's on, you don't really shut it off. Because you're going to be carried by it. And the way it's paced, you know. In the beginning, you're just stuck in this mundane guy driving his truck on the CB. The CBs were big. And he's got his, you know, one-liners and his advice he puts over the air. And it's done so cheesy and great, in my opinion. It just, you know, ramps up as, you know... His friend's wife gets a fiancé, gets kidnapped, and they're in the middle of this festival. And then from there on in, it's insanity, and Kim Cattrall just joins in and becomes caught up in this. Lots of water everywhere. People are wet all the time. And there's, like, sorcery stuff and real alchemy-type craziness. And it just, it permeates through the whole movie, in my opinion. It just makes it and elevates it to... What what a vision of a script and a storyline. Um, at the time, I think what came out near it, uh, Eddie Murphy's The Golden Child, which I love, right? And I think they tried to get it out beforehand, and you know, at, at that age for me, I wouldn't have cared. You know, I'm going to the movie theater. At the time, you went to see two or three movies. Mm-hmm. Big Trouble in Little China, directed by John Carpenter. What is it? It's written by Gary Goldman, David Z. Weinstein. But there was something about the screenplay and people getting credit for it. So, I think they wanted to give someone else credit, so maybe I should too. Um, Richter. Who's Richter? Uh, W.D. Richter. And it was like a lawsuit where he was supposed to get credit. So let's give him credit to... um, He's the director of Avengers of Buckaroo Banzai. Another movie I love. Zany, crazy fucking movie. Uh, You know, there was a time when these movies just felt... uh, Right. And could you... I'm trying to think of a comparative movie now. You know... I guess you could see certain trends that have come back here and there. 
We had the underworld with the vampires and werewolves. Could you see a mystical fantasy blending in modern times? Yeah, and I think they're, they're just evading me right now. Maybe geared towards a more younger audience. But this is just fun. Rip-roaring fun, going from the beginning to the end. Uh, Kurt Russell's just charming and goofy and out of his element until he's not because, like I said, his, uh, his friend, played by um, Dennis Dunn, is obviously good at martial arts, and he's the, um, you know, he's looking for his fiance, and he's the big fighter in the thing. But you know, don't ever count the trucker out with a big mouth and lots of puns, and it's just off the wall shit. You can't help saying the line, and it's like when you get the movie starting and he's on his CB. You got to remember how big that was. I mean. You we went to friends' houses and turned on the CB and you talked to people all over the place. Not even just being a trucker, where that's you living and you're, you're hauling stuff from state to state. And, you know, hey, good buddy. And you're just talking. And, no, I'm talking about Brooklyn, New York. And you go and you turn your CB on and try to talk to people around the you know world or whatever. It was a big thing. And especially, uh, you know, the days of just HBO and WHT starting and cable and VHSs. I mean, you know, I'm born in 71, so I'm kind of that coin-op Atari generation going into where we are now. And you don't see this type of movie that much, and if you do, it's probably... Um, a lot of these movies are putting that, you know, Evil Dead category where you're putting some humor in it and you're making it overboard. And it can deter people. It's just going to not resonate with people. I don't see that for me. Uh, I, you know, I do see it, I guess, in other genres and things that I just don't enjoy so much. For me, it's more of a mood thing. So, you know, if I'm in the mood to watch a war movie, you know, what am I going to go to? You know, westerns. And so it's like, what do I feel like I'm in the mood for rather than just ruling something out? So if there's something someone recommends to me, I might not watch it right away because it's not what I'm feeling at the time, but I'll get to it eventually, that type of thing. So there is a time to watch this as a uh, festive uh, uh, atmosphere to it. A You know, like I said, maybe in this culture today, woke culture, I'm doing the quotes, that this could be viewed as, you know, stereotypical and insulting you know I don't know I, I look at it now it's like a lot of people got a lot of work high profile I mean yeah bomb but it was uh, something that became such a cult classic it's revered and looked upon with um, a lot of love I don't think anybody is like ashamed from doing this that type of thing oh yeah and WD Richter got an adaption by so he got credit for actually making changes to the script and making it fit. Just fun. Big Trouble in Little China. Kurt Russell. You know, Kim Cattrall are like the ones you're looking at from the poster and the name you recognize. But all these actors just fit in and for the roles they're in. You're seeing some of the martial arts people you've seen on Shaw Brothers and Ocean View, uh, whatever that was, it was, it was like two competing um, companies that were making you know, loads of martial arts movies. For me, it goes back to like, you know, Five Deadly Venoms and 36 Chambers, all that stuff. And you see some of these actors here, you're seeing the uh, chemistry of, you know, just some fun action comedy. And a little lacking these days, I think. I so enjoy the superhero movies in that sense, and it gives me a little hope when I see things like Moon Knight that just kind of, you know, blew my mind in a way, and WandaVision. I could see John Carpenter's vision returning here. I mean, we still got, you know, Kurt Russell. But it's one of those things that you don't see making a continuation for. I see, like, a Showtime... HBO thing. You know, you do eight episodes per 
season and it starts around the ending of the movie, maybe. And you don't have to bring him back, but, you know, you could. I guess you could do that for lots of his movies, like Escape from New York, Escape from L.A., and what are you going to do next? You know, like Escape from Boston. In any case, I recommend this movie as a fun romp. 1986 fantasy martial arts comedy <laughs> directed by John Carpenter. Starring Kurt Russell, King Cattrall. I mean, this is a lot of fun. Great actors. Even the side characters and the supporting actors. It works on almost every level for me. Even the tropes and the silliness and the one-liners. and then I, it, It's funny to say one-liners because it's like 50 of them. <laughs> so there's so many one-liners. It, it's just... And his sage advice, you know, his quirks and his quips. And it just lands for me and i'm gonna say i bet a majority of people would like this and would really get into it so it's a definite recommendation i just put it in that hey you know this is borderline too over the top you know i have a friend who um just kind of can't get into some of the over the top quick tarantino stuff like he likes to like maybe a jackie brown thing but once you start getting into kill bill with fountains of blood shooting out of limbs and some people just have a little, you know, what immersion, what draws them out of the movie. And so I could put that, this in that category where, but some people, it's just not going to resonate. You know, it's, you know I'm not going to get in the groove of the movie. But in, in, in defense of the movie, it does the right things. The music gets you in, the charm, the beauty of it, the cinematography, the way it was shot, you know, seeing all they can do, what they had at the time in 1986. Just fun action, fun comedy stuff. And yes, maybe if I looked a little deeper and I wasn't as human as I am, I could point out that there are stereotypical stuff that's a little insulting maybe today, but that, you know, I just let go because whatever. And you know, having a recent watch of it, it escaped me again if it was there at all until I you know, got my little things ready to do the podcast where I'll open up, uh, you know, the IMDb or the wiki. And, you know, so I like to be honest about that, but just, holy shit. And it's not to say, um, no, you know, I have a Chinese friend who loved it, but I did. Uh, and it, like I said, for me also, you know, I'm a big Kung Fu Shaw Brothers fan. Uh, for the most part, there were almost all there were, and just martial arts in general. Like, just get it combined with a wise ass, wise cracking, gun shooting guy, and you know, being corny and charming and growing as a character as this, you know, loudmouth, you know, big shot guy who thinks he's a big shot and he has to learn. You know, he gets humiliated and that type thing, and all the predicaments this movie puts him in growth and and it's just a uh you know it's a joy for me and i hope it would be for other people too it's definitely a recommendation again i just put it in that weird uh genre where you tell somebody they're gonna go you're fucking crazy this movie is bonkers it's ridiculous it's stupid i'm not even i couldn't get past the first 20 minutes i could see this being one of those things but again i'll take that chance it's a recommendation it's a movie from my youth that i love it resonates with me, just all the zaniness, everything about it really just captivates me and how they really put this, uh, you know, work into the villains and the mythology and the magic and alchemy. And it just is a real bright spot looking back on some of the movies, you know, that you, you, you go back and think on. This is not in the same category as, you know, um, Lethal Weapon, but, you know, when it comes out around the same time as The Golden Child, you can see that, which I still love The Golden Child. I watch that whenever it comes on also. Maybe I should do a podcast on that. Anyway, I recommend Big Trouble in Little China, directed by John Carpenter, Kurt Russell, Kim Cattrall, fun blending of myths and mythology, fantasy, action, modern, just fun. A fun ride, made well, 
and just a joy for me. So there you go. Everybody, good movie to watch. It's an oldie, and now it's an oldie, right? Have a good time, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'll talk to you all next time. Bye-bye.